Welcome back gamers, today we're going to be talking about a solo slash solo flawless guide for the Warlord's Ruin dungeon released in Destiny 2 this week, and we're going to be going over every encounter in this dungeon. I say encounter because I won't really be covering the traversal sections as that pretty much is just jump a little bit here, don't go too far forward, kill the enemies from a distance, and just, you know, climb a mountain. So I don't think people really need a guide per se for that. We're going to be sticking to the encounter specifically here as that's where I think most people will have trouble. Now, the footage you're going to be seeing here today is going to be on my Hunter. I'm going to be going over each encounter boss and then detailing what decisions I made, why I made them, what's a safer play, and so on for these encounters and mechanics. If you do want to check out a solo flawless for other classes, I will be uploading the raw runs of those, including Hunter, on the channel, so stay tuned for that. But otherwise, we're going to focus on the mechanics and the best way to stay alive and how to go into damage safely and prepared. So skipping along a little bit here, we're at the first boss of the dungeon. Now, for this particular encounter, I ended up doing a couple of things. First off, as a hunter, I ended up using Assassin's Cal to start the fight because of just the perma invis that I can keep up by meleeing enemies. Now, the second reason I ran this is because I want to stand in the totem for that brief one or two seconds before the boss teleports you because that counts as capping the totem and getting it closer to that point where it's finished. And then once you get in the cage, you shoot the Acolyte Eyes down. I can come downstairs again, hit a melee with Assassin's Cowl, and then go stand in that totem to finish it, and also swap to my damage exotic, which is going to be Liar's Handshake during this fight. And then I can do Tractor Cannon, 1-2 Punch, Gathering Storm, punch him in the face a bunch of times with X3 Combination Blow, and do a ton of damage. Now, generally speaking, whatever class you're on, I think you should utilize trying to get on that totem when the boss is putting it down just to get that couple seconds in. You don't have to do this, but if you can and you're used to it, you can get a two totem damage phase on this boss, which would then cause you to potentially get a two phase overall on the boss instead of doing a three or a four phase. So, you know, healing rifts, healing grenades, barricades, things like that that'll keep you in that totem but not getting shot by the boss will work greatly in your favor. As for damage, on Hunter, I obviously used Tractor and then just one-two punch with Gathering Storm, but on other classes, I think things like uh, Legend of Acrius, for specifically on a Warlock where you just pop well, would do fantastic here. Swords are another great option, particularly Lament, because it can keep you alive while you're sorting the boss, or if you need to sort some enemies that may be around you if you're like on a Titan, for example. Speaking of Titan, if you want, you can go on Banner of War and kind of do the same thing, but with Tractor Cannon, and just melee everything down, mow the boss down probably in 1.5 phases, because Banner is busted for this particular boss but generally you want to do those kind of setups and stay away from things like linears or levy's breath because of the insane flinch that you're probably going to experience from all the enemies on the field and the boss shooting you you could try rockets here but you have to be very careful because obviously the scorn are just going to be surrounding you and they might walk in front of you and then you rocket yourself and you die so just watch out for that or just use the other methods now we're not going to talk about the jail encounter because if you're doing solo flawless you already know how to do this I'm just going to mention briefly here to bring something like Agger Scepter or Sunshot or something that blows up all of the enemies instantly in front of you because while you're walking in this dungeon and trying to avoid all the spikes in the walls, you're going to get chased by the Scorn with the freezing effects everywhere basically. But if you freeze them first and shatter them, then they can't do it to you. So bring something to help like Aggers or Sunshot. Now we're on the second boss. So most of this is going to be me talking about how to set up going into the damage phase and then what you can do during damage to try to maybe mitigate errors. First up, the way the encounter works. So as you probably already know, the Acolytes control when the next phase of the boss fight starts other than just killing trash mobs. So normally, what you would do is just shoot all the Acolyte Eyes down and go straight into the Scorn phase. In a solo flawless run, I think the optimal way is just having five eyes killed and then one still remaining in the air. And then go around and prep your arena where you want to, you know, prep some heavy ammo or just eliminate the Minotaurs down in the bottom middle first just so they're not there anymore. If you're not doing Fall Winters, then you absolutely should kill them, by the way. And then after that, just make sure you have a combo going such as Resto, which we're going to be seeing on the footage here. I constantly try to have resto and radiant up no matter what i'm doing after i'm ready to start the next phase i shoot down the sixth acolyte and then i head over to the right side of the arena for the scorn to spawn there the reason i head to the right is because there's a little more wiggle room in how you can hide over there as well as just plant yourself by one of the torches to keep you sheltered from the storm as well as the scorn dude i can just outright shoot him wait till he drops his uh totem the second one and then kill him and then cap both totems very easily and the boss for the most part can't shoot you which means he can't knock you off the map i feel like on the left side 
there's more room for error as more stuff can see you, they can shoot you, and the boss is constantly beaming at you on the left side too. Now going back to killing the Scorn dude, I wanted to mention about the totems. Specifically here, make sure that you keep him alive until he drops that extra totem, because this way, he drops the totem, then you drop him, then you cap both totems, and then you will get two relic balls that will spawn in the middle. That means you only need to do this phase twice instead of doing, you know, one single totem at a time, which means it'll be four phases. Instead, you just do two phases. Now, while you're capping these totems, make sure that you never go past maybe five or six until you head back to the torch to get sheltered from storm. Do not play risky. If you need to, just get one totem and head back and don't die because biting cold is, well, a pain in the ass and you should not play games with it. Make sure you're always on top of that timer, five to six at the maximum, and then head back to a torch. Now, after you've done this twice successfully, or as many times as it took you to get four relics in the middle, you're kind of done with doing the objective. At this point, you can take your time for as long as you want. There's no timer that's going to wipe you or anything like that. So you can plant these relics one by one when you feel safe. What I would do here is try to wait for the ants to spawn in, the scorn on the sides, try to proc your resto and radiant combo on them, and then try to kill them as fast as you can. After that, make sure that five of the six acolytes are down again, as before, like I mentioned, and then start handing in these relics one by one into the bonfires. Now, quickly talking about these bonfires, I feel like the best way to do this is to start either on the back left or the back right plate, and then go in a rotation diagonally, meaning... If you want to start back left, that's the closest to the exit on the left side, then you start damage there, do that one play, and then go diagonally across to close right, and then start the damage there. The real main reason for this is simply just the distance the ogre has to walk. Depending on your loadout, the ogre can be walking straight to you, then slam your plate, and then your damage is done. If you go diagonally from plate 1 to the other plate, then the ogre has to travel a further distance over to you, which means he can't slam the plate right away. Then after that, you just choose whichever plate you want to go to, either the close left one or go top right. Sorry, back right. I confused myself there. Then after you've done the third plate, you once again go diagonally across and make the boss walk further to you, which means hopefully your damage phase looks nice and long. By the way, in case you're wondering why I'm not doing it in the footage you're seeing, it's because I was using an ignition Dragon's Breath build, so basically I was just stunning the ogre over and over and over again, non-stop anyway, so I was getting my money's worth either way, but if you're not using this build, then the diagonal information could be helpful to you. Here is the setup for the ogre, second boss of the dungeon. I had on Blade Barrage and also Shards of Galanor. Then for abilities, you have the Gambler's Dodge to get your melee back, any jump you want, Knife Trick in the melee slot for Radiance, Healing Grenade to heal you, Aspects we have on your mark and knock them down, and then for Fragments, starting backwards, we have Ember of Torches for your Radiant Melees, then we're going to the front, we have Ember of Ashes to apply more Scorch Stacks to targets, and we have Ember of Singeing, your class ability recharges faster when you Scorch targets. And then finally, we have Ember of Imperium and Solus to basically put our timers of Resto and Radiant to 12 seconds. And then every time you get a Solar ability or weapon kill, you extend the duration of those. Now for Jumping Puzzle number two, again, there's nothing groundbreaking here. I can't really guide people on, hey, keep jumping and make sure you don't fall off the map. Now I will say there are some rocks that can just fall from under your feet and that could potentially get you killed. So I would highly recommend running Strand. Not only are there grapple points in this arena for you to take going straight to the boss, but also if you happen to fall off one of these boulders that I mentioned, then you can use a Strand Grapple to get back up and save yourself from losing your solo flawless. The other tip I want to mention is bringing in long range weaponry, mainly because there's phalanxes around corners and stuff and you want to stay at a distance try to kill them, but also because there's scorn snipers in the arena that obviously you need to fight at a long distance, so a sniper or a scout do that perfectly. So we've arrived at the final boss. Now I'm sure people watching this already know how the boss fight starts and begins and the mechanics and all of that normally anyway, so I'm going to just skip all of that. What I'm going to be focusing on here is the tips that you probably have not heard of yet or don't know about that will greatly, massively improve your survivability and completion of this boss, whether you're solo or with a fire team. Here's my setup for the final boss fight, by the way. I use Celestial Nighthawk and Lucky Pants as my exotics, but when I swap between those loadouts, I kept all of this the same. So, Marksman Golden Gun, obviously. Uh, Gambler's Dodge for your melee ability refunds. Whatever jump you want. Knife Trick for throwing my knives and getting Radiant very easily. Healing Grenade, very obvious. And then Aspects uh, on your mark, and then knock them down. For my Fragments, I had Ember of Mercy and Ember of Searing combining together. Searing creating Fire Sprites, and then Mercy granting me Resto when I pick up those Fire Sprites. In this boss fight, this happens quite a bit, so it's very easy to just go walk to a Fire Sprite, pick it up, and you have Resto. 
and then I have Imperium, Solus, and Torches, basically to get myself Radiant, and then extend the durations of Radiant and Resto through these. I'll be leaving dim links for all these builds, or as many as I can, down in the description below as well, in case any of you guys want to try it out. Let's start with the easy ones. First up, always be in the back of the arena until you have to cap a totem. There's absolutely no reason why you should be in the boss's face, other than when you're capping totems, because that will get you killed. Second, when the boss is up with its Acolyte Eyes, make sure you take down half of them, and make sure you're not using Sunshot for this, by the way, or Sunshot will just destroy all of them through Incandescent and all that. Make sure you're shooting it with, like, a regular hand cannon or whatever you want to use. Just get rid of half the eyes, so that's less damage focusing on you. For the Scorn Dudes, again, the same thing happens as in the Ogre fight. Make sure that you target one of the Scorn Dudes, but don't kill them until they drop the totem down. Now, you don't have to do this, but... It does increase the time you have to damage the boss, so it just helps you get through that barrier threshold faster instead of doing multiple floors of little tiny specks of damage through just one single totem. Of course, if it's too risky for you and you shouldn't be doing it because you're going to get killed, then stay away from it and just cap one totem and keep going. But if you have a good setup and rotation where you just killed all the scions with a hand cannon, an incandescent, whatever, and then the guy drops his totem, then quickly kill him. By the way, I used is not getting one shot him in case anybody cares. And then you just jump in there, start capping the totem, and then you're done. Just make sure you're watching the corruption encounter as you're doing this as well. Now, speaking of the totems and getting rid of your corruption, this is a massive, massive tip here that will help you greatly in your solo flawless runs. Once you have capped one or two totems, whatever you've decided, and then you melee the scorn dude to get rid of your corruption, bolt upstairs immediately. Yes, the next level that you were going to go to to start the next phase of the boss fight, just go there immediately as soon as you've completed the totem and got rid of the corruption. Assuming you did that, you will take a tiny bit of damage jumping on the taken ball getting there, but you can still go there for free. Once you're there, it's just the boss shooting you. You will no longer have to deal with Scion spawning in and multiplying and flinching you and none of that garbage. You can just wait for damage to start once Imminent Wish is over and then do your full DPS cycle on the boss. In me personally, it was Goldie, then Nagi, then uh, Bait and Switch GL right in his face. And it works perfectly because it's just the boss shooting you. You can just have a healing raid ready or you can just dodge his blast it is so much easier than worrying about all the stuff downstairs now once the boss does move the next phase does start so if you're not comfortable immediately starting the next phase of that boss fight you can actually go back downstairs kill the scions down there and then collect any heavy ammo or green ammo that's down there that you may have needed collect your thoughts maybe get your super energy back and then go back upstairs and start phase two by the way, this tip that I'm talking about, you can do this on every single floor. Just make sure that on floor 3, if you climb up to the DPS plate that you want to damage on just because it's above ground, get off of that plate when the Neiman's debuff is at like 2 seconds, just so you don't start final stand DPS or the big damage phase, if that's what you want to call it. But otherwise, you can do this trick on every single plate and never have to deal with Scion spawning in during DPS. Now on floor 3, everything works exactly the same as the other two floors, just like I've mentioned. However, there's one thing to note while you're pushing the boss from floor 3 to the big damage phase in the center with the three plates. Once you've done your damage cycle on floor 3, you don't actually have to rush up there afterwards at all. The music is going to start and you're going to think it's a damage phase, but it's actually not. It starts officially once you've stepped on one of those three plates. So, in theory, what you could do here is on floor three, you use your super, use heavy, whatever you want to use, push the boss, and then just chill. You can go back down to floor two or floor one, look for ammo, blah, 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 recharge your super. In this case, I can Nighthawk on floor three, then get back another Nighthawk, and then go start the damage phase. Then, after you've started the damage phase on plate three or two or one, whichever one to start on, you can shoot the boss, and then as he teleports away to start the next plate, you just go downstairs and you can sit there again and start charging another Nighthawk or looking for more ammo or maybe you want to load out swap because you've ran out of ammo and you can switch to like Malfeasance, for example, that has unlimited ammo. And you can do this each time. So basically what I'm trying to say is you start plate one, do your damage, boss teleports, jump down, recharge everything, change loadouts, whatever you need to do. Play 2, do the same thing, shoot boss, wait till he teleports, go down, recharge super, ammo, blah blah blah. Play 3, shoot the boss again, non-stop. And either the boss is going into final stand, or the boss goes immune, and you restart the cycle. The whole play thing is kind of boring, because, well, who wants to sit there and charge their super over and over? But, 
it's just maximized damage. It helps you survive in several cases. For example, you can go up there with three Nighthawks or three Hammers of Souls, which gives you Sunspots, or three Well of Radiances, which gives you infinite healing and a damage buff. And the same thing applies to even not having supers. You can just go Plate 1, Healing Aid, Jump Down, Recharge, Plate 2, Healing Aid, Jump Down, Recharge, Plate 3, Healing Aid, keep damaging, and then the cycle's over. It's really safe and effective. After the boss cycle completes, you get teleported back to the starting point, at which point you just restart with whatever loadout you had to begin with, and then repeat the process and grind until the boss hits Final Stand. Now let's tie in Final Stand and the Lucky Pants build. Basically, I ended up using Lucky Pants whenever I ran out of ammo with the Nighthawk build, which was towards the end on Floor 3, or the, rather the three plates before Final Stand, and then I swapped to Malfeasance and Lucky Pants in order to use that for Final Stand. Also, what you could do is you could just leave on Nighthawk and then charge your super, and then go in with Malfeasance just that and Nighthawk alone, and that also gets the job done. But we have one more final tip for this boss fight. Now, I'm kind of on the fence about this being a thing, but it's a thing in the game, and this is a solo flawless guide, so I can't really not mention it because that'd be disingenuous. So for final stand, you can either fight the boss 1v1 or 11v1 if you count the Acolytes, and then down the boss there to get your solo flawless done, or you can simply just turn around and run away. Yep, that's a thing. You can run away and go climb floor 2, and then floor 3, and then a rock on floor 3, and literally just shoot the boss with, I don't know, a hand cannon or maybe Wish Ender, and just kill the boss from there. He can't do a damn thing about it, and GG, you have completed Solo Flawless. Super dumb, but I had to mention it. So that is it. That is my Solo slash Solo Flawless guide for the Warlord's Ruin Dungeon. I genuinely hope these tips have helped some people complete the dungeon. I feel like, especially for the final boss, a lot of people do not know that these little tricks exist. So that's a main reason why I'm making this video. Generally, these type of long videos don't do really well. People just don't want to watch 30-minute, you know, explanation guides, I guess. But I feel like I have a job to do and, a, I guess, a duty to tell my community how to get this done in a optimized and safe manner. So here we are. So if you enjoyed the video or maybe this has helped you get your solo flawless, please consider subscribing today, maybe leaving a like and or comment in the comments below. It does help the channel grow. It's much appreciated and helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you don't know what to leave as a comment, you can just simply leave solo flawless. Other than that, hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you guys in the next video.